Rogers is with us, as is Bernard Zapor, a former special agent in charge with the ATF, faculty associate with the Arizona State University School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Uh, Bernard, I want to I start with you. We know that uh, the FBI is on the scene. Uh, we know that this guy is in custody. What are they asking him tonight? Uh, their immediate concern is going to be conspiracy. Uh, any other involvement? Are there others out there? Is this part of an extended plan? Hard to imagine that being the case, but they have to get the satisfaction to know that they have the singular person responsible. That would be the immediate source of information and what they want to find out at this, at right at this moment. Yeah, we we heard that he posted a manifesto. That's what the authorities said. We don't know what's in it, uh, but that that does seem to be more and more common. Um, these these losers with some kind of an axe to grind put their gripes out there on the internet internet and then go go shoot up a place i would argue that we have a social crisis we have a cultural social crisis right now in the united states that deals with a acute form of narcissism and the need for adoration the murder of people and the notoriety that comes with it right now is their goal and we have to expect that in large crowded such as retail uh, sporting venues and things that there's going to be a continuation of this. There's other people that have this mental health crisis, a societal crisis, and I think that's something that we're going to have to address as a country, as a society, as neighbors, as citizens, to find resolution to end this. Because obviously the prosecution of a single individual for the murder of 18 people is no form of justice. So you would agree, Bernard, that, uh, that putting his name out there is, is probably what he wants? He wants the notoriety? He wants the notoriety, and I would argue also that professing some type of hate, an ideology, uh, is just a veneer of justification for what they really want, which is an ego-driven, self-centered desire for adoration. Steve Rogers, uh, you've investigated a lot of crimes. Is this kind of thing... Um, it, it seems like it is happening more and more often. We're getting copycats of, of, of these mass shooters. Well, John, uh, Detective Ted Williams mentioned something very, very important earlier, and that was there could be a manifesto. And sure enough, there is a manifesto, which may uh, lead to the question that you asked earlier, why? So that manifesto may have the reasons why this individual committed this crime, may give the police the motive, and boy, that leads them down a real good road as to putting all the pieces together. Look, like the ATF uh, agent just said, uh, let's eliminate any acts of terrorism. Let's eliminate uh, elements of this case that are really not factual. But what is factual is now they have a suspect in custody and they have a manifesto which could lead to a motive. But Motive and manifesto doesn't help us prevent the next one, does it, Steve? Well, it doesn't, but I'll tell you what we can do. What we can do when it comes to uh, prevention is certainly mental health is a tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, issue that we have to look down, tighten these soft targets into more hardened targets. Uh, and, and I've said it again, over and over again, our social media uh, tech giants have to take some responsibility as to what they're posting online. Look, I go online and I see kids beating up kids, fights in the street and on and on and on, which in my view as a law enforcement officer could end up being a trigger for something uh, for for someone who is mentally imbalanced to actually commit this type of act, Bernard, what about video games? So many of these um, school shooters and others have been sort of raised on a, a diet of violent video games. Uh, is that a factor, or is it not? I think that what we need to do is have a significant look through our mental health experts, uh, law enforcement educators, and have a serious partnership, a research based examination of what the trends are in society, cultural, generational, and find out this cause where somebody has this ideation of themselves above all others to the point of homicide. What are the causations are? There could be many, but I, you can see repeatedly that there's a veneer of whatever the justification is, but it's the same killer in every one of these events. Same killer in, in, in that it's a, a disaffected young man, usually didn't have a large group of friends, uh, kind of a loner, and, and has some kind of an axe to grind with, with the rest of the world. Is that the, the common theme that you're talking about there? I would say more so a person who is obsessed with themselves, their needs, their feeling of having to be justified in whatever it is. 
and that they, they pick their justification to commit this act. It's a sod of natterization, of, excuse me, of adoration. They're seeking a narcissistic fulfillment. Uh, I don't want to speak out of my lane way when it comes to mental health here, but there's quite obvious that there's, it's only one layer deep when we're looking at cause really believe as a nation and as a society, we need to focus on that to find identifiers. Is there a tripwire, something that helps us? Secondly, we have to assume that these events are going to happen. So having all of us trained in run, hide, fight, having all of us train in stop the bleed training with the assumption that in large gatherings this is going to happen, that could also save lives. It's not prevention, but it might prevent people from going to shock and dying. It might give people the opportunity to escape an attacker, even when law enforcement is becoming more and more proficient at stopping the gap between the first shot and their response to stopping the shooter, which obviously El Paso did a phenomenal job today, just like that happened in California just recently with their stopping of that shooter. Yeah. Steve, you know, I couldn't help but think when we were watching the police chief and, and others at that news conference, I mean, they are grieving too. This is, this is their community. Um, those officers had to see some horrible things in the parking lot and in the Walmart. How do they deal with what they've just witnessed? Extremely difficult, John, but this is why I've always said this is the time for our clergy to get involved. For No matter what faith you're in, what matter your house of worship, I would ask that our clergy to step up to visit their law enforcement officers nationwide and first responders and bring some comfort to them. Very difficult time. Yeah, because they did a terrific job responding to this and, and taking the shooter without firing a shot. But again, uh, very emotionally difficult for them. That's why we need to pray for them and to get our clergy involved. And this is the time to really look to God for help. No man's going to be able to comfort one's heart. So I implore that people pray. Steve Rogers and Bernard Zaper, again, thanks for your expertise tonight. Let's check in once again.